Hello, this is uh, Richard Cespedes, and uh, let me just just this a little bit. I'm here to talk about um, beauty, and I'm here to talk about just life in general, and how just uh, beauty is nothing more than something that just progresses, and that uh, it doesn't really sustain itself, it doesn't really remain constant. You know, um, what what we perceive as a society as attractive in our era is only attractive for our era. It is not a continuation. You know, from from what I've seen, um, the the perceptions of beauty has changed drastically. You know, um, not everyone. You know, some people will say to differ. Some people will still like um, Marilyn Monroe. You know, but it's only a you you know the perception is drastically changed every decade it changes and all we have whatever you are attracted to now is just a flavor of the decade it's a flavor of the month you know that's more of a similar more of a common term but beauty is nothing more than a flavor of the decade or a, a flavor of an era basically you know for the lifetime of the span of the celebrity that you're attracted to that's how long beauty lasts like for an example is uh, the perception of what we find attractive. Like I don't know exactly. Um, there was an Asian, Asian people back in the nineteen, eighteen hundreds, nineteen hundreds, something like that. The women would crumple their feet in and have it folded in, and men would find that alluring and attractive. It was a fad. It was a trend, and I think that beauty is nothing more than a trend and a fad. And it's and it's and nothing more than a flavor of a decade. Whatever you're attracted to is a flavor of the decade. The next decade, you are going to change your perception and your your idea of what attractive is. Believe me, when the year twenty twenty comes, your idea of beauty is going to change. Believe me, it doesn't sustain itself. It doesn't remain the same. One of the things that I want to add to that is, um, like for instance, when I was younger. In the 90s, um, back then, if, if, if a woman was going out, if a woman was ethnic, Asian, Hispanic, or black, and she was going out with a white man, back then, that was very impressive. That was like, wow, you're going out with a white man? And back then, I was like, oh, you know, everyone was shocked. You know, wow, white man, wow, you're going out with a white man. Ethnics were very impressed by that. And what happened? That was in the 90s, okay? I laughed. I'm, I'm laughing right now because that's but in the 90s you know one decade 10 years that's not long enough that, that's not long and then year 2000 came around and then our perception kind of started to shift you know it started it started to change a little bit you know uh it, 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 it wasn't as drastic until uh i think the election of barack obama really shattered that and kind of completely um changed the perception drastically of the perception of beauty now um I can't really pinpoint exactly in the nineties when when beauty was pers was changing, but I think that people were making different decisions. People were um, starting to think of the concept of going out with different race and things like that. But I think that when Barack Obama was elected, that was when it was completely shattered, and that was when it was you know people started to just change. But uh. I think that maybe it takes maybe like something drastic to change people's perceptions, but maybe not. I think it's I think that in a general sense, you know, if Humphrey Bogart was alive now, like let's say Humphrey Bogart lived right now all the way from the 50s when he was in the movies, and he's still alive and he still looked the same, completely the same, like in the photographs you see him in. If he still looked the same. You know, he would he would not be seen as attractive. Like, people say, oh, well, you know, um, this guy used to be attractive, but now he's old. Yeah, but what do you expect? You know, yeah, he got he, he got old. But not only that, but the, but the surrounding, the society surrounding him also changed the perception. People nowadays, the style of Humphrey Bogart is not attractive no more. You know, not to be rude, but it kind of seems a little bit geeky, a little bit uh, clumsy, klutzy, kind of uh, uh, heavy-footed you know, kind of guy, and, uh, um, if he was alive and he still, and if he survived and still looked the same, he wouldn't be attractive. To some people, he would have, but not to a lot. 
the perception of beauty changes and our concept changes, you know. And Melanie Monroe, if she was still alive, I mean, I'm pretty sure in a general sense she'll be still found attractive, but I think that her beauty is starting to dwindle because of, again, because of Barack Obama and, the, and all other things like that. But, um, you know, and, and, and the other thing I want to talk about is also, um, because beauty and fashion come go hand in hand, you know. And I think that beauty itself is also just feeble, petty type of peddling. It's just, it, it, you know, there's no really no point for it to be around. Like, I'm just kind of trailing off a little bit, but what I'm trying to say is that people should just, wait, if, you, if you're going to change your perception, you have to always be aware that times change. If people are changing their perception, we should change their perception of beauty. It should not be a trend. It should, we should not continue it as a trend. We should not wonder, oh, I wonder what next decade, what new, new, new um, you know, what new fashion is going to come out. We shouldn't be worried about the new styles, new fashion, new technology. We should worry about finding the truth. Finding truth. Because science is all about pinpoint, accurate truth. You know, science isn't about fads. Like, if someone fo solves a math problem, it's not a fad that it's solved. It's not a fad. It's truth. It stays that way forever. It doesn't change. But people tend to kind of perceive beauty as a trend or a fad. That's the way I see it. People are not even aware that beauty is not constant, that, that, that beauty doesn't remain the same. What you find attractive is not going to be the same when you get older. Not because people get older, that has to do with it, but also because the perceptions of the society changes, because we get bored. If, if we're going to continue to change, we should continue to change so that we will find the true what be what true beauty is the truth not not the not the skin tone not the shape of the face not the not the not nothing just the truth we should peer and peer so we can find the kernel of truth instead of having to constantly be petty and selfish and wonder about what's the next trend what's the next beauty what's the next you know the new um Marilyn Monroe what's the new uh, Humphrey Goldbart or Bogart who's 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 gonna be the new Brad Pitt Who's going to be the new this or that? No, no, no. We should find the truth. It's, there is no new. We should continue to find the truth. If we're going to be... This this era that we live in, 2014, new millennium, we should consider this to be the final level. We should be the final level. We should find the truth. We should use this decade to throw away the past and continue to push forward to find what true beauty is. And not to be lying to ourselves and trying to be bored. No, there is. You're bored? You're bored. People get bored. Why do you get bored? Do you get bored of water? Water is water is what it is. It supplies it supplies nutrients to the body. It makes you healthy. When we progress, we should progress so that we as a society become more healthy toward each other and to ourselves. When we find the truth, we become mentally and psychologically and spiritually healthy because we found the truth. We're no longer uh, de trying to decide what is new and what is changing. We're, we're, the reason why we want new and different things is because we're unhealthy. We need to be healthy. We need to perceive the truth so that we can continue, so that we can find the truth to be healthy forever and never have to worry about what is new. Because there is nothing new. You don't change water. You don't never get tired of water. No one ever talks about changing water. Why? Because water is the nutrients of, it's the truth. It's the almighty truth of health. It's, it helps you. you. You don't think to yourself, oh, next decade, I wonder if they can change the, the, the color tone of water and, and like add some uh, and glow in dark pebbles in water or uh, make, uh, you know, they don't do that because water is water. It's the damn truth, you know, and we should look for truth in beauty and in fashion and everything, find the ultimate truth. Instead of wondering who's the next beauty, male or female. Because that's petty. And science is truth. Whenever we solve a math problem, like a Gregory uh, Perelman, um, he solved the Poignier Conjecture, which I hope I pronounced it right. That right there is going to be the truth. And you know, the truth helps to mold the future. The truth helps to mold the future to greater 
and vast uh, imaginative uh, landscapes. When we find the truth, we progress to the end so that we will remain healthy. And when we no longer want changes and trends and styles to change, when we find the ultimate, what, what is true beauty, when we find the kernel of what is true beauty, we become healthy. We become healthy forever because we are pleased. We are content. Just like with water, we are pleased. We are content with water because it supplies us with nutrients. It's healthy for us. Finding the truth in beauty and trends and fashion, all the stuff, finding the truth in just anything, whether it's in science or if it's in books or stories or anything like that, finding the truth will make us more fulfilled so that we don't need to need we, we don't need new things because what we have is will be enough forever just like water we never want it to change because it doesn't need to change because it supplies us with everything we need and we love it and uh you know that that's what i think you know i myself too you know um this is tyler lutner mario lopez um, Alberto Del Rio, they're all guys that people perceive as attractive. I'm in that category with them, you know, so people say. But the thing is, though, the sad truth is that we are nothing more. We are nothing more. I am nothing more. All men that are found attractive now, Mario Lopez, Tarlo, and Alberto Del Rio, they're all nothing more than the flavor of the decade, flavor of the era, of the era of tw 20 years, 30 years. You know, people might look at them and say, oh, well, they just got old. No, well, they got old, but their time has passed, and people, people's perceptions have moved on. But then again, this decade should be the end. We should not continue to change the perception. We should change the perception so that we find the truth. After this, you know, it's the truth. It's about truth. Be this and last forever. And that's all i got to say about that. Beauty changes. But if we change, we're in the new millennium, let's try to find the ultimate, final, the final change, the final point, the end, so that we can become more content and pleased as a society and more fulfilled. And that's all I gotta say. Thank you very much. This is Richard Cespedes. Thank you for your time.